freaking first cut. Golly! Welcome to the First Cup Podcast. I'm Rick Gaben, and this is your round three recap for this week's The Players Championship. Joining me to break it all down, Greg Ducharme is here. And Greg, 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 hello. Hello, Rick. Moving day. Uh, quite a bit of movement on the leaderboard for uh, the third round of the, the Players Championship, which was awesome to watch. I, I had a ball watching this round today. Entertainment level for the first three days has been very good. Very good. And, you know, it looked like yesterday we may get a little bit of a runaway and the first two days may steal the show from an entertainment perspective. But um, as Lee Corso would say, not so fast. Not so fast. As uh, Billy Mays would say, but wait, there's more. <laughs> As Neil would say, set it and forget it. That one does not. That one does not. No, that, that, not, not sure that one applies. A lot of movement, a lot of madness, but not the only madness in our world over the course of the next seven days or so because brackets are back, baby. If you want to get into our bracket group, the first cut will have its very own group. You can compete against myself and Greg and Josh and Kyle and Mark and Patrick and whoever else we can reel in and all of you guys. And all you have to do is go to cbssports.com slash play to sign up. There are, of course, bracket challenges where you could win, I don't know, a new Nissan Rogue. Would that be okay? How about trips to the 2025 Final Four? Would that be any fun? I think it would. They've got men's. They've got women's pools. You can create ones with your friends. Of course, I must tell you, there is no purchase necessary. You must see terms and rules for details. But the link is in the description to get in now and make all your sweet selections. Shall we talk about the players? Let's talk about the players. Let's talk about the movement early on Saturday because we got a little bit of foreshadowing for what was possible. And I was just, I was, I was rubbing my eyes. I slept in a little later than normal. I said, I got to rest up. We're going to have a, a, a really long weekend here. And by the time I woke up. Sam Burns was already four or five under par. He made the turn, Greg, in 30. That is six under. He tacked on another at 11. That is seven under par. Seven under par through 11 holes are at the stadium course at TPC Sawgrass. He did give uh, two back on 15 and 18, but he offsets those with birdies on 16, 17, added all up. Seven under 65, 38 spots up the leaderboard. Guy who made the cut on the number now in T17. Taking advantage of the holes you need to, uh, you see he makes birdie at, or better on all four par fives. He plays the par fives five under par, which is uh, which is just huge. And quite frankly, Rick, there are so many circles on this card, but he was so dialed in with his irons today. He left a couple out there. He did. Granted, they were 11, 12 footers. It, they're, they're not. Uh, you know, it's not signaling an issue with the putter by any means. It just signals how many opportunities he had. He continued to give himself looks, uh, which was really fun to watch. Taking advantage of some of the easier, more gettable hole locations. Taking advantage whenever he had short clubs into the greens. Um, and, you know, I, I referenced that he left a couple of putts out there. He also made a fair share of them. Uh, uh, he is a great putter and putted very well today. It was whether it was a, a short iron that he knocked in there close uh, or a putt that he made from 20 feet. It just seemed like everything he had work. Everything was working for Sam Burns today. I loved when he finally he was like seven under par already and he finally missed his first 12 footer and he was like <laughs> appalled at it. Yeah. Saying, Sam, <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate you're in the moment here. I, 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 it's OK if you miss one of these. It was he was like distraught. Um, <laughs> Doug Gim, Gimmer, a gimme, the Gim Reaper, whatever you want to go with. Doug Gim is a new player. We have talked about this a lot, Greg, on Monday previews over the past couple of weeks. He shot a six under 66 bogey free highlighted by a chip in on 17 that much resembled the better than most. Tiger Woods putt on a very similar line. He gave us a very similar fist pump. He was wearing all Nike gear. I thought, oh my God, what year? What year is it? 
out here, but Gim moves up 22 spots. He's in a tie for 12th, nine under par. A guy that we talked a lot about on Monday. Uh, he was all over the card on Tuesday. Really liked Doug Gim coming into the week. Uh, but, you know, what's fascinating about this performance today and really the performance through the week is he, he's done it in a different way than he has been. He has been a ball striking machine this year. And I believe coming into this week, Doug Gim was like third on the PGA tour in strokes gain total, which is just a sweet number for 2024. Granted, it is a small sample size, but it signals how well he's been playing four straight top 16 finishes coming in. Um, but, but this signals what he's done this week is, is a really strong signal. Cause one it's the player's championship. It's in all caps because it's a big time event. Um, and it's the flagship event on the PGA tour. So to step up this week is always a big deal, but when you do it with short game and putting the way Doug Gim has, it's a, it's a signal that, Hey, um, this is a more complete game than it's maybe looked like. You're seeing the uh, the chip in at 17 is a great example. The putt at 18 is a is a great example. Um, he he's got a lot of talent, a lot of ability, and I don't even think this week he's hit his his best stuff. Josh also submits uh, Dougie McBuckets as a potential nickname. I could I could probably get behind that. Last guy of the morning wave that I want to talk about before we address the craziness at the top of the board. And that is one Ludwig Oberg, a 67 on Saturday for the second time this week. Also shot that on Thursday. It was a 73 on Friday, which uh, probably was a little bit disappointing. But this was a bogey on one, a bogey on 18, but all good in between that because he had birdies on two, four, five, seven, nine, 11, 16. And we're good. We're running out of opportunities to say, here are all the accomplishments that Ludwig has done before playing his first major, right? We're going to lose that opportunity in a couple weeks when we get to Augusta, right? But again, just reminding people, he's like nine months into being a professional and it is, I don't have a word. Well, I, I was going to say impressive, but that's not, that's not, that is not loud enough. It's easy. <laughs> you know, it, it just looks so easy. It's a simple golf swing, which gives you the indication that it's going to work for a long time. Um, that, that is how it appears right now. There's not a lot of maintenance. There's not a lot of updates that he's going to have to do. This is plug and play. Just keep on playing because his game is really solid. I mean, his the, the number of iron shots that he hits right at the flag is appalling to me. I mean, it's one after the next, just coming right down the chimney. Um, uh, he, he may not have the distance control of a Scotty Scheffler, but the direction of these iron shots is, is just so incredible. I mean, he only hit 12 greens today, but uh, it felt like, 11 of the 12 greens he hit were coming down right on the flag. Just awesome stuff out of Ludwig. If you ever get a chance to see him in person, if you ever get a chance to go to one of these events, or if you, I should say, if you ever get a chance to go to one of these events and you find yourself at the driving range, I mean, watching Ludwig hit a golf ball is special, special stuff. Highly encourage it. Uh, Greg, we have a lot of guys in the mix. That four shot lead from Wyndham Clark. See ya. That's gone. We've got to talk about the new top of the board. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. It's time for the madness. And CBS Sports HQ has your wall-to-wall -wall NCAA tournament coverage. We got your game highlights, expert analysis, and insights all the way to the Final Four. Start and end your March Madness coverage with CBS Sports HQ. And we're back. Two and the only two remaining major winners from last year that reside on the PGA Tour are on the podium. As we speak, Wyndham Clark entered the third round with a four-shot lead. He shot a 70, Greg. We knew it was not going to be 65, 65, 65. Uh, he ran into a little bit of trouble on some wayward tee shots. The putter was not as hot as we saw over the first two rounds. We knew leaderboard gravity was going to happen. We knew there was going to be some regression. 
What is your takeaway? What do you see? You know, you're sitting down with Wyndham Clark tonight. What do you, what do you remind him of after this third round? I remind him of uh, the type of player that he's become. I remind him of this transformation. I remind him of the confidence that he seemed to have throughout this week in all of his pressers, all of his interviews, uh, because that stuff is still there. And the thing that has put him in second place on this leaderboard right now, um, well, that stuff is still there. He had two tee shots in the water today, one on a par three, one um, on at number 12. Those are two scorable holes. And he plays them one over par. And he still shoots 70 and still has himself right in the mix. Uh, he has been a great putter for the entirety of his career. And the putter got a little shaky today. You know, there were a couple of six footers that he missed. Um, but at the same time, you think about the the big comeback moments. The par putt from 10 feet or so on number 12. Uh, make getting up and down after taking a drop at 17. I mean, those are huge moments. And this tournament really could have taken a, a significant turn in the other direction if if he doesn't execute those. So I think there's st uh, still significantly more positives than negatives for Wyndham Clark. Yeah, I think he showed enough, right? Enough uh, fortitude to get through the, the bad moments. Uh, we Again, we knew he wasn't going to shoot another 65. If we flipped these rounds and he started the week 70, 65, 65, he'd be brimming with confidence right now. The shot that he hit on 17, I love you, Wyndham. It's about one of the worst shots I've ever seen hit. It was, it, it was terrible. But I mean, I think it flew 102 yards. Yeah, Shotlink has it at 102 yards, which the pin was 123. The front was probably 119 or something. So he is, he is, he hit a wedge 20 yards short. Yeah, he, ch he straight up chunked it. You know, how many times do you think Wyndham Clark has done that in the last three years? Uh, that we might have just saw the one. Right. I mean, that that is extremely uncommon. Um, and I think that tomorrow when he heads back to that tee, there will be an opportunity for redemption. Um, he understands that. OK, that that's an easy one to write off as a one off. Easy to write that off as a one off. You know, and, and the one on 12 that go, goes a little left for him. Right? He comes back to 14 where there's water left as well. And plays a cut. You don't have to play a cut there. You could play a draw. He could probably hit his two iron off the tee if he's feeling a little nervous. Uh, but he sets up with a driver down the left-hand side and peels it back into the middle of the fairway beautifully. He handles the tee shot on 18, uh, although he hit an iron off of that tee. Um, but I, I think he understands what to do. And he comes in tomorrow... Got to get himself a little more focused, like he said in his post-round interview, uh, and and I think he'll be good to go. Yeah, I thought even without having his best stuff, the bounce backs were great. I mean, even even seventeen, he 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 hits a second one to six feet and makes the putt and gets out of there with bogey. It's a huge. That's a huge bogey. Huge. It could he? It could be a disaster. I mean, how many times have we seen? We saw Justin Rose do it yesterday. You know, he comes in there at one under par, hits his first one in the water goes to the drop area, hits his next one in the water. I mean, this can end your tournament in an instant. And and Wyndham didn't let that happen. The reigning champion golfer of the year shot a 64. That's eight under and was the round of the day, which included a bogey on a par five. The ninth hole where he, <laughs> I'll get to the good in a second, Craig. Tried to hit a shot right-handed and didn't flip the club. He just yes. tried to touch the back of it. And let me tell you, it didn't go. Well, the easiest clubs have um, more loft on them. Okay, when you take a club the other way and hit it backwards, it has negative loft on it. Right. That is extremely challenging. And boy, was this one ugly. Because it went straight into it, rolled straight into a tree. It yes, Shotlink had it at twenty. He hit it twenty four feet, not twenty four yards. He hit it twenty four feet 
and <laughs> directly into a tree. And then it ends up on the cart path. It scribbled up to a tree. <laughs> it scribbled up to a tree. It was, I mean, look, these are obviously extremely challenging situations. So I, there, I mean, no disrespect with Brian Harmon. It's just that footage. I know. The, the camera angle on that. <laughs> it was so, it was, uh, well, the good news for Brian Harmon is that was really the only thing he did wrong all day because he was he was phenomenal. He made uh, four birdies on the front. He made five on the back. That was the only bogey that he made. And we have seen Brian Harmon do a couple of things, Greg. He is capable of getting really hot. We've seen that in match play events. We've seen it in uh, some of his victories. We saw it at the Open Championship. We see him lean on his strength which is the way that he drives it so accurately the way that he rolls the putter i mean he is once he's in it he is very difficult to shake and he is very much in it right now he's going to head to the final round two shots back and, and you consider this golf course I, I think it has um gotten since the move to march there's been a bigger advantage to gr great drivers of the golf ball uh, but Brian Harmon is a great driver of the golf ball. It doesn't have to be through distance. Uh, and he did miss some fairways today. Ended up hitting nine in total, which is still plenty. It's quite a few. Uh, and he left himself opportunities other than nine to hit the ball on the green. He hit 16 of 18 greens today. So he, he doesn't make mistakes. He had so many greens today, it almost takes away his greatest strength, which may be a short game. Uh, we don't get a chance to see that very much when, when you're hitting that many greens of regulation. Uh, the putter has the ability to get hot uh, it, like it is this week. He led the field today in strokes gain putting. It, it's, uh, I think, just the perfect golf course for Brian Harmon. I could see him winning the Players' Championship so easily. And I've picked him here on many occasions before, but... It, he looks like since winning the open championship, he looks like a different player. Uh, he, he does not look, it does not look like that open championship win was a one hit wonder, a fluke. I mean, he's playing some of the best golf of his career leading up to that event and after, and it's carried on all the way to this moment right here. The man that they're chasing is Xander Shoffley who leads this golf tournament by one shot. He is in at 17 under thanks to a bogey free seven under par round of 65. Greg Xander was in complete control of his game. This was in my opinion, some of the best golf I've seen Xander play. It is at times expected because he is such a great player. He's been a top 10 player in the world for uh, as long as he has been. I, I believe tomorrow, I believe tomorrow is a big day for the Xander Shoffley legacy. I think you're right, Rick. Um, the thing about Xander Shoffley that we talk about all the time, well, there's two. There's a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is he may be the most complete or the most well-rounded player on the PGA Tour. Right. Uh, Will you go through the bag? And there's no hole in his game. And and that was on full display today. I mean, he missed a he, he missed his share of greens, and that's to say that he hit it poorly. Uh, but he missed some greens, and every single time he got it up and down. Uh, he was six for six in scrambling today. He's thirteen of fourteen in scrambling for the week. This is why I believe he's had so much success in U.S. Opens because um, he has the ability to hit the shots, but when you get a bad break or, you, you know, you, the, you have just some difficult shots and miss some greens. He has the ability to get it up and down. He's rock solid on the greens, except for the first green today. Um, which what a moment that was when he missed that, uh, four, four and a half footer, but boy, he didn't let it get to him. He turned it around and immediately, uh, he had some big momentum swings uh, against Wyndham Clark here, uh, and and it's highlighted by the big bonus fifty eight footer at at number fourteen. I when he missed that putt on number one, I said, "Oh boy, here we go again." Right, just another yeah. another final group in which Xander Shoffley is gonna, you know, 
I just I had flashbacks to the U.S. Open where he left two in the bunker, or was I don't know. I mean, how many left in the fairway bunker on number one right out of the gate playing with Rory? And I thought, oh boy, this is this is this is over. Um, I did like so he did, so so when you have a, when you are trying to make up a four shot deficit, very hard to do that in one hole. Now maybe you go out here and you know Wyndham hits two in the water on seventeen or something like that, but. What I loved is Xander applied pressure outside of that first hole to Wyndham immediately. He applied it early. He applied it often. He chipped away at it. He just kind of kept leaning. If this was a heavyweight fight, he was just leaning on Wyndham Clark, making him answer everything that he was doing. I I love the way that he got this lead cut. And then, of course, uh, yeah, bonus to bonus to get yourself the lead heading into Sunday. Yeah, you're right. He did chip away at it or early on. You think about the holes that you really want to take advantage of and make birdie. You have number two. Wyndham Clark doesn't make birdie at two. So one and two are now a wash. The lead's still at four. Uh, you go to number four. That's a wedge opportunity. Uh, should you hit the fairway? They both have a wedge opportunity. Xander hits it on the green and converts the putt. Wyndham misses short of the green which was kind of inexcusable to land it short of that uh, short of that flag there with the backstop. But that's a different story. So he, he's taken advantage of the easy, the holes, the holes you should take advantage of. He gets nine, he gets 11, he, um, he gets 12. And, and this is, I'm chipping away at this, but I'm not really doing anything crazy, anything out of the ordinary. If I miss, I get up and down. And then when I get on a par five, I make a birdie. I get a wedge in my hand. I make a birdie. And all of a sudden, Wyndham Clark feels like he's got to play near perfect golf to stay ahead. And it's a challenge. And then you get to 14. And Wyndham hits it in there to 10 feet. Xander's on the right side of the green. We kind of hit an indifferent shot to 58 feet. He makes. Wyndham misses. And it felt like a match play moment. Kind of reminded me of Henrik Stenson's putt uh, at, at the Open Championship, albeit that was on Sunday uh, at Royal Troon in 2016. But, you know, that that moment kind of turned the tournament upside down. Uh, of, and, and this one did, too. This kind of felt like a Sunday on a Saturday. It did. In a lot of ways, it did. But now, because it was a Saturday, Rick, it brings... 18 more holes into the mix. And yep. I have no clue what's going to happen. Neither do I. We'll get to the betting board in a second. Real quick on uh, just a few other notables. Wyndham, or uh, excuse me, Maverick McNeely has gone 67, 68, 68. He's at 13 under par. He's going to need a lot of things to go right for him to win this golf tournament. He gained a ton of strokes around the green on Saturday. But we have also spent a lot of time talking about uh, Maverick McNeely this year, Greg, he is finally healthy. When he is healthy, he is a much better golfer than he has displayed over the course of the last 12 months. It is nice to see him in the mix here playing well. I don't think it's going to end with a little golden trophy for his mantle, but uh, a great week with 18 to go. It is a great week, and you can see that he's enjoying himself out here. Uh, you can see how, how much gratitude he's playing with, how excited he is to be here, and he's having fun with it. And it's fun when you're making shots, right? He chips in at 14 today, puts it off the green at 15, and then makes it from off the green. Uh, this was really exciting stuff. But I, I think you're right on the button for this week, the purposes of of just this week. He's leaning a little bit too much on the short game for uh, for a big run tomorrow. He's four back. He would need a pretty heavy move. And I'm not sure his iron play is in a place where he could facilitate a round of 64, which is probably what he'll need tomorrow. Scotty Scheffler uh, has been dealing with the neck slash shoulder injury that he got a lot of treatment on during the round on Friday. And then also obviously uh, over the night and into the day on Saturday. And it was a very slow day. He was out in one under he then played his first six holes on the back nine with six pars. But Greg, he he salvaged a outside miracles chance at this golf tournament by birdieing 16, 17, and 18. So the fight 
has certainly not left Scotty Scheffler uh, this week. No, and you know, there's a cool aspect of this, which is there's a story with Scotty Scheffler that isn't the putter. I, I mean, it, it's the it's the first time in like three years where we have it. There's a different story about Scotty. Yeah. So th- the reason that's cool is because he's been very good on the greens. Missed a couple today, and there was a moment in the middle of that back nine where he had a a couple of good looks and missed them, but but they don't look so flinchy. He looks calm on the greens. It looks like he's going to make the putts that uh, that he should, which puts him right there in contention. Now the disappointing part of is in the opening round, and really. Even in the second round, even though he was hurt for for much of this, it looked so easy for Scotty. It looked like this is just in a marathon. He is going to just keep on going, hitting every fairway and every green. Um, it, it was a remarkably tactful performance. So the injury is disappointing because today you could tell it was a little slower. Um, didn't quite have the the full speed. He was hit, taking a lot of club. And it was just amazing that he was able to still go out there and shoot 68 with a, with a stiff neck. Five shots off the lead. We'll need a lot of things to go right for him on Sunday, but we are trending towards uh, likely another Scotty Scheffler uh, top 10 at a big time event. Josh, let's see what Vegas has to say about this and they are looking at Xander Shoffley close to even money to win the 2023. Wow. 2024, it's 2024 already. 2024 players championship plus plus one thirty. Wyndham Clark is three to one. Brian Harmon, five to one. Scotty Scheffler at 10. Matt Fitzpatrick at 14. Then they start to get bigger. McNeely at 28. Sahith at 35. And then they get even bigger than that, Greg, because everybody else is at least 110 to one. Or longer. Yeah, I, I think this uh, this tournament really comes down to the top three guys there: Xander, Wyndham, and Brian Harmon. I assume that one of them is going to play really well, and you have this kind of situation where um, you have a two shot lead between Xander and Brian Harmon, and then Brian Harmon's too clear of McNeely and Fitzpatrick. That makes it difficult for guys like Sahi Thigala and Scotty Scheffler to pass everybody and make up the shots. I, I think it's very likely that Xander Wyndham or Brian Harmon or all three put a really nice round together tomorrow and, and make this difficult for the chasers to give them a legitimate threat. So I think the odds here are fair. Um, now, Xander closing there there have been a lot of instances of xander touching the lead and falling away right it didn't happen today but it's a saturday Uh, but correct me if i'm wrong here but the win uh the win his last two wins he had the lead he was leader or co-leader heading into the fall so he's got like it's got it's technically Six, um, six 54 hole leads or co leads. He's won the last three that's Scottish travelers. And then also the Zurich, which I don't know if you want to count that or not. Uh, he did not win the previous three, but the Olympics as well. Oh yeah. That would not come up in mind, yes. which was before, you know, so it's, it's quite, it's quite a few in a row. Yeah. It's just more anecdotal. And like when he, when it, it's, that that is a very specific thing, right? Like he ends the round, the round is over, and what position is he in? I wonder if I if we went back and looked and said, how many times did he touch the lead during a round and then not finish uh, tied for the lead? You know what I mean? It's like it's, yes, it's weird with him. Well, those are the things that are in your mind when you think is Andrew Shoffley touch the lead like Genesis, right? Right, touch the lead immediately eject. Touch the lead, immediately eject. But the the reason I bring up those 54-hole leads is um, he has done it three in a row, like you mentioned. And his game is the most complete on the PGA Tour. 
So there, there's very little reason to say, okay, Xander's not going to get the job done tomorrow. Now, that being said, Wyndham Clark and Brian Harmon are feisty competitors, proven a strong ability to close as well. So I'm not looking at, I'm not ruling Xander out because of his, um, because of his, you know, folding down the stretch at times. Uh, I'm, I, I think I'm in the camp of Wyndham Clark because I, I think he's been the best player this week. I think today's round was an off day. Uh, I, I think he understands what to do on these greens. And I think he, because his all of his work, so much of his work has been in the mental game, uh, that this is a big opportunity for him to come out in a better mental space tomorrow and put together a phenomenal round. My gut says uh, Wyndham Clark as well. For a lot of the reasons that you just mentioned, n- no, he did not have his good stuff today. But he didn't really, he didn't collapse. I love the, it was, it, it was, he did not compound errors. When he made a mistake, he almost always got it right back, got it back in position. He still showed the ability to use the driver as a weapon. We know the the strength that he has is going to be important over the week. We know the putter that can get scorching hot. And like you said, this is, it really is a different guy, right? I mean, I know he's sitting there talking with his team tonight and they're framing this as, dude, you just had your bad round. He just had the best round of his career. You're going to smoke him tomorrow. And, and there was a hint of that in his post-round press conference too. You know, He mentioned, I really like this aspect. He mentioned Xander specifically by name. Uh, you know, I'm hoping to do, have a Xander round and do that to him tomorrow. Uh, you know, flip the script and and play a Xander round tomorrow. And and when you do that, it shrinks the moment. It's it's not about you know can I win the players' championship, right? It's I'm going to go beat that guy. And and he is in that competitive mode. Hey, Xander Shoffley. I see you. We, I know I can beat you, and I'm going to beat you today. Rather than the Players' Championship could, would change my life. I could win $4.5 million, be a Players' Champion. Think about all the accolades that come. There, there's none of that. It doesn't seem to be anyway. This seems to be, I'm going to go beat Xander Shoffley tomorrow. Now, that's a ni- that's a nice place to be in. I'll leave it at that. This time tomorrow, we'll know who the player's champion is and who is four and a half million dollars richer and who gets to be uh, that dude for a whole year. Anything else, Greg, before we get out of here? Just uh, really excited to see what we get from Scotty tomorrow. Uh, other than other than Xander, Brian Harmon, and Wyndham Clark, that those three are going to be really fun to watch. I think they're great competitors. Um, but I want to see if Scotty's neck can come back, can get a, a little better. You know, if you had ever had a knot in your neck, it can be really debilitating when it first happens. I can't believe he's even playing golf. Um, but it can go away pretty quickly as well. And especially with the treatment of options available. I think it's going to be fun to see if Scotty can go make a run. I think he's too far back, but um, but just to watch him go play, put a great round together and make a run at this thing. Nah, he should probably just play it safe and withdraw tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Don't risk further injury. Yeah. <laughs> I could really use that right now. Yeah, I'm sure you could. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night to uh, discuss the winner of the Players' Championship and everything else that happened this week. Uh, big thanks to producer Josh, who does all the hard work behind the scenes. That's Greg Ducharme at The Real GFD. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been The First Cut. We'll catch you next time. 